So welcome folks to this week's video. So in this week's video, I'm going to be exploring Exmoor. And I think Exmoor, to be honest, is a national park, which is beautiful, but I think it gets overlooked a little bit, overshadowed by its surroundings, really, because you've got Dartmoor to the south of it, you've got the beautiful coastlines of uh, Devon, and of course, a little bit further down, you've got Cornwall as well. So I think it does get overlooked a tiny bit. Now, I'm not here to make a, uh, uh, a video promoting the uh, national park at all, but I just thought, you know what, I got out of bed this morning, I thought, I was going to do a sunrise, but of course it's grey and overcast, so I didn't want to do that. So I just thought, where am I going to go? So I just came down to Exmoor and see what I can get. So I bought a 4x5 out with me today, and I've got some uh, Delta 4 and uh, Delta 100 actually, and some XR 100. Now, I bought both film stocks out. I've also got my dart bag with me, um, because I really don't know what I'm going to shoot. So I've come to this first location, this lovely grim uh, uh, with a bridge over, it's really nice. It's actually a waterfall as well, making its way up the, uh, up the side here. Just looks a really nice scene. So I've come out here and I thought, looks a bit overcast, a little bit grab, no, not really colour left on the trees after the after uh, autumn. So I thought, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna shoot some Delaware. So anyway, I'm going to get down to this, uh, this riverside now and we'll see what we can find. So, hope you enjoy this one. Right then, folks, I hope you can hear me over the water because it's quite loud down here. Um, this is the scene that I've come to photograph. As you can see, um, I've got this lovely tree here covered in sort of moss and stuff. It looks really beautiful. And then I've got this really old bridge here. It's going over the water. And I love the fact it's got a waterfall on the other side. So I'm hoping that with the 100 speed film, that I can really get slow shutter speed and again just sort of silky out this water as it makes its way down the stream just a really beautiful scene so i've had a look around with my viewfinder app and i identified a couple of locations now i'm going to try the 135 mil lens again um i have just put the uh just giving it a trial run it seems to be working okay so i'm going to give it a go here i'm going to sort of place myself down here try and get this sort of lower Bit of this, the rapid here just before it starts the rapid just at the bottom next to the tree so you get the corner of the tree in and then obviously the arch of the bridge there just looks beautiful unfortunately i am going to have a little bit of sky in but i am shooting black and white so i'm not not too fussed about it i'm just hoping it's not going to be too distracting but i might have to crop it out later but we'll see um there is a little bit of sunlight now it's just occasionally just coming out and lighting the side of this tree which does look actually quite nice because um, I do like a black and white scene with a bit of contrast um, and, and a quite a large dynamic range in it. I quite like black and white images like that. So it'd be nice if it does come out. If it doesn't, not that bothered. It's a beautiful scene anyway. So yeah, I want to get up and set, uh, set up now and then we'll go for some metering. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay then folks, so hopefully I don't fall in, which will just be uh, typical for me. And I hope you can hear me over the, uh, the water because it is quite loud. Um, <coughs> right, time to do a bit of metering. I'll start off on the bridge, I think. Um, I sort of put that at middle tone. I think that's sort of a, a, a lightish or a, a middle range colour in this scene, I you think. So I'm going to start with that. Obviously, not with the green on it. EV8, so I'm going to put that in the middle. And now I'm just going to have a metre around the scene and just see what else I get. So the water is 8, 3 is 9, guy is 13 and a third. Which, like I say, I'm not too bothered about that. I mean, that is going to be completely blown out if I uh, if I include that in. The side of the bridge is six and two thirds. Darker rocks are sort of a seven. So I think what I might do is just push just because of the sky. I don't want it to be like a mass of white. So what I might do is just push this. Uh, what we get in? Let's say thirteen and a third. 14 in some places because it has just brightened up a little bit. If I bring that down, it will be on the plus uh, plus four, which is right at the uh, the top end range of the uh, film. Then hopefully, I mean it's just lightened up again now, that tree is down 11, 9, yeah, I'm going to stick with that I think. So, I do want a slow shutter speed this time, so I'm going to go F. 
32 and a third gives me two seconds. So I'm going to throw that in. Hopefully this one stays about. F22 and the third. Just do a test shot. A little bit of film. Make sure the blade is shut. Yeah, we're working. Right, go and get my film and I should be right back. Okay, so I'm all loaded up now. The sun is just coming back out again, so I'm going to get on and take this shot. Take that out. I haven't got to shield anything. Here we go. Two seconds. First shot in the bag. I just realised that when I actually loaded this film, I put the uh, the colour side the light side of the slide facing out on both sides. They usually do it the other way around, so when it seen the light, um, that I showed this the light, we have seen the light. Right, I'm going to get on and take this second shot. Got the shutter. Here we go. Two seconds. That's it done. It takes me longer to set the camera up than it does to take two shots. So that's two shots in this location. I'm now going to get in the car and I'm going to move on. I have taken a couple of shots with the uh, with the Lumix as well, so I really like this location. Especially now it's got a bit of light. I might take a couple more. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to move on and see what else I can get. I've got uh, <coughs> I've got two more um, sheets left. Got well, I've got a foam holder that I can put two more sheets in. Um, I haven't loaded it up yet because I don't know whether I'm going to shoot colour or I'm going to shoot black and white. So I don't actually have an idea of what I'm shooting yet. I might shoot a, a wider vista where I want colour. Or I might shoot a wider vista or a black and white, just don't know yet. So I'm going to get on, get packed up, and get on to my last location and see what I can find. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Yeah, I've just watched that back, and uh, I'm going to apologise now for the amount of water. If you didn't need a wee before, you're certainly going to need one after uh, watching this clip. So apologise now. Right, well, welcome folks to the next location on Exmoor. Um, now this one's a bit of a cheeky one because I've literally just popped the car there. Um, I'm on a road that I didn't think was that busy but actually turned out is sort of like the M4 of Exmoor. Um, and the reason why I stopped really is something a little bit abstract and a little bit different, a little bit, well, it's one of them sort of scenes that normally I just shouldn't like pass to be honest with you. Um, but it's this one here. Uh, this waterfall. And I just really liked it with the rock in the background and the sort of uh, just with the grass hanging down there and I just liked it so um, what I've done is I'm actually loading up uh, I've loaded up the XR100 in a couple of uh, holders and I'm hoping that the slow shutter speed and just focusing on that area there is going to give me like a, a real shunt a slow shutter speed for that low ISO um, just to sort of you know make streaks out of the water there and, and just bring a bit of movement to it really so that's what I'm looking for so I'm going to get set up now and hopefully not get run over um, and then get the shot taken. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get on with it. Right then, folks, so I have focused in, just my lens on, and I've gone for sort of um, just what I think is a nice area in the uh, in the scene there. I've got two waterfalls either side of the, uh, the image, and then just the grass sort of training down the rock face, and I've focused right on in there, in the, on the rock. So I wanted the two fish my lens, so I wanted to get in, get a nice detailed shot of this rather than the whole scene. So we're going to do some metering. Um, like I said, I'm now shooting with XR100. Um, so let's get some metering. So we're shooting a box feed. Um, where to start, I suppose? Um, right, the rock face is a seven. So that's going to be fairly dark, I would say. So I'm going to put that minus one. And the water is a nine. That's gonna have a plus one. Well, what I was to say as well, as you probably noticed, I have got my orange uh, coat on right now, or orange vest on. Uh, just employing the Nick Carver method here. Um, I'm now, like I say, some of the side of the road. So it's for a bit of safety, but it's also, um, you know, to draw a little bit less attention. They just think I'm surveying the road, really. So, uh, well, that's what I'm hoping it looks like, anyway. So. <coughs> right, so, um, it's a fairly straightforward one. Let's like, say the, the rock face there is a sort of seven. So I put that on minus one on, on the scale here. 
Um, and then the water is, uh, is sort of a nine, so like a plus one. So I'm only really dealing with um, a couple of stocks of dynamic range, so no problem for this current stock at all. So let's see what we're going to do. I want a little bit of, of uh, like I so I want to capture that or just slow that water down a little bit. So I'm going to go for F22, which gives me two seconds, um, and see how that comes out. And then I think what I'll do is I'll shoot F32 seconds, and I that will give me obviously four seconds, plus a bit of reciprocity as well. So let's get on and try all this in. So hopefully you can hear me over this water anyway. So F22. Two seconds, so obviously we're on board. It's already set. I'm just going to give it a bit of a test, make sure it's working. Yeah, obviously blades are shut. Like I say a million times, always got a uh, habit of ruining your day if the blades aren't uh, aren't shut. I'm just going to check the um, the reciprocity app for the use. I don't think it's going to have much effect on. Um, for two seconds, octave 100. It's still two seconds. So, go with that. Right, here we go. Shut the top, two seconds. That's it, first shot in the bag. Right side out for me. Or first shot in the bag of this location anyway. Just turn this around now. F32. I'll just check four seconds again on the um, rest of the app. It's going four seconds now. It's six seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. As I say, I'm coughing a bit to my cold. Right. Put that up there. Here we go. Set, second shot in the bag. Hopefully you enjoyed that shot. I'm going to get packed up now and I'm going to get on to my next location, um, which I don't know where it is yet, but uh, yeah, I'm literally just driving around today and just enjoying being out doing photography. And, that, and that's all it's about today, find a location, stop in, taking some cut shots and moving on up the road. So I'll see you guys in a minute. So, just had a bit of a weird experience there. I've just sat in the car uh, looking for the best place to park to come down to my next and last location actually. And uh, I suddenly felt the uh, car vibrating. Looked in my rear view mirror and there's a whole flock of sheep coming down the road and they've literally gone either side of my car, all around me, and uh, were rocking the car side to side as they were pushing past me. So uh, yeah, that was fun, that was fun. Anyway, the next location on the list is um, Porlock Salt Flats. Um, there's some sort of, I think we call them petrified trees or whatever whatever the wording is for them. Um, and there's a bit of, of a barn down here. And you shot loads of times before. Uh, and the best time to get it really is um, on a high tide when the, uh, the salt flats get flooded. And of course the trees then are in the water. And so is the barn. So. Uh, yeah, I've seen some excellent shots down here um, in those conditions. I've just never been down here myself, so it's a bit of a scouting mission. And uh, also going to shoot some Delta 400, I think, this time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get something decent. So yeah, onwards and let's see what we can find. So, welcome to the uh, salt marshes at Porlock. And uh, this, this location we shot loads of times for. Like I say, usually 
when there's all seawater um, all around us now, including this barn that's behind me, which is really beautiful. And uh, yeah, of course, star attractions are these trees behind me. Now, I just love these. These are absolutely beautiful, and I am definitely gonna be coming back here again when the tide is right, but I am gonna get a couple of shots with black and white today. I'm sort of thinking that tree over there because I want it to be minimalist because I haven't got this the water around the bottom. Um, I love this tree here also. There's loads of sort of detail. I just love the way it's sort of snaking round and everything. It's just such a beautiful looking tree that. And then I also love these sort of smaller bushes or shrubs or you know trees that didn't quite get to be um, or maybe they've collapsed or whatever's happened to them. Um, but yeah, I just love them as well. There's loads of loads of really nice stuff to shoot here. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the lonely tree in the background um, just because if I shoot the bigger tree here, I'm going to have the mess of these little ones in the background. I could get low and involved in these little trees here, but again, I'm sort of thinking that maybe, um, I'm thinking that maybe uh, with water around them, they look a lot better. So I'm going to go with the lonely tree in the background there and shoot that. So, Right, I'm going to get over there and get set up and uh, get my app out and see what best composition I can find. Right then folks, yes I am getting down low again. So my first composition with this, I have taken a couple of shots with the Lumix because what I'm loving is this tree here is beautiful. We've now got some of these trees, uh, not trees, these clouds, sorry, that are um, just starting to sort of show themselves really nicely. And the you've got this really muted colour because the sun it has dipped but it's still quite bright and it's behind the clouds so it's really giving just a nice soft light to the side of that tree and it's looking absolutely beautiful so what i've done here is my first shot i've got the uh, the intrepid set up really low 250 more lens on i'm going to go with something like f32 again because there is a little bit of ripples in this water and i want to sort of cut that out dead um, because i've got a slight reflection of the tree there and then the tree in the background and i'm hoping that i can bring some of the detail out in them clouds also because it is just absolutely beautiful and I just cannot wait to uh, to have a look at these shots afterwards. And I can't wait to go back here when it's all flooded around here because I just think the shots will be even better. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting these shots in the bag now. Um, and yeah, and I'm going to get on metering. So let me get my meter and I'll be back in a second. I'm shooting Delta 100, so obviously I've got the um, the meter set to 100. I'm going to shoot everything at box speed, otherwise it gets too complicated when I've got different film slots going on different film speeds for different um, different films going on as well all in the film holders uh, you know my brain is just uh, trying to deal with the fact that I've got two different uh, two different folders with different film holders in it with different film in it so I've just got to remember that I'm not uh, going to end up sort of developing black and white uh, in colour and vice versa so anyway let's get on and get this uh, metered. So I'm going to meter the tree and I want that to sort of sit at the sort of mid-tone area so let's see what that's giving me that's a 10, so, well, funny enough, that's actually uh, set dead on a 10. So let's see what the sky's doing. So, so I don't want it blown out. That's 13, so sort of a plus 3, that sort of area. And then let's go with the grasses. They're a 10, and the reflection of the water sort of is a, a 9 and 2 thirds, 10. So, yeah, we're all sort of, yeah, sat in a nice space, really. So I'm liking the fact that I've only got three stops in a little bit of stops of dynamic range in the whole scene so what i might do is move the 10 onto a minus one so just make that slightly darker um just to make sure that i get that to retain that detail in the sky so yeah right let's see what that gives us uh, so if i went f45 that would give me a second f32 half a second i think i need to get a second so i'm going to go f45 at a second and see how that comes out. So, well, yeah, yeah. Let's sit it at that, see how it comes out. There's a yappy little dog in the background. Right, shut the blades. They always ruin your day if you don't. F45 and a second, just do a test shot. Yep, all working fine. There was a little bit of wind about as well, so I've just got to bear that in mind. And let's take my last my last uh, film out that hasn't been exposed yet and yes I have again done the same thing where I put the light side out so I will immediately change that in a minute right that's closed everything's working let's get on and take this 
Oh, that's a proper yappy dog, that one. Right, take that out. Shutter is cocked. Make sure everything's as still as possible. Just wait for the wind to die down a little bit. Like I say, it's not massive, but it's just enough to put a ripple on that. Always away, you know. When I go to take a shot, the wind picks up. There we go. First shot in the bag. Beautiful. Right. Right, there we go. On to the next location, which is literally just there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put this sort of moved and then I'll uh, be back in a second. Right then folks, welcome to the last composition of the day. And um, yeah, I, I think I think this is actually my favorite location of the day as well, actually. But I just want to talk you through what I got going on here and why I'm so excited about this one. Um, I was excited about the other one, um, probably just as much as I'm excited about this one. But what I'm loving is obviously the same tree. That tree just looks beautiful and it's so bleak with nothing going on in the background. It's just beautiful. And again, we've got the same soft light just sort of slightly hitting the side of it. I, I do, there's a part of me that wishes I was shooting colour here, just because there is a slight sort of purple hinge there to the to the, uh, to the clouds, and um, just the blue and the white going on there, and just that soft light on the tree there, it's just beautiful, it's really, really beautiful down here. Um, so anyway, composition, let's go through it. What I've got is this, it's a very simple one, so uh, yeah, sorry for the simplicity of this one, but I'm looking for simple. Um, what I've got is this lovely just sort of, line here that just goes through to the tree really nicely just coming from the bottom of the frame just going through and then obviously just the tree there and then the beautiful clouds that are going on in the background and i think i'm glad that i haven't got clouds that are just exploding with color because i think that would be too much for this scene i just like the fact that this is very simple the light is very soft it's almost like a soft box has just been put over it um but yeah that's where we are so um i'm just going to check exposure again um, I didn't actually do it a minute ago because what I did was I just assumed that it would be about the same. I'm hoping it is because we're going to go with F22, which gives me four for a second. I'll just check it again. Yeah, so the tree sat on 10. The sky, just a little bit darker now. 12 and two thirds. Tree's 10. Grasses are sort of eight and two thirds. So a little, maybe a little bit dark. So I might bring the tree round to be sort of mid-tone, as you would call it. So the tree's a 10, just double check. Yeah, it's a 10. Clouds are 12 and a third, which is fine. And the grasses are eight and two thirds, which is fine. So, with my new settings now, F22 um, gives me half a second. So I'm just gonna dial that in now. I don't need to freeze anything in this frame like I did the other one with the water. Let's just move that back. Just double check that it's all working. Shutter's closed, blades are closed, just to say, all ready to go. Right, let's get this beautiful last shot taken, and fingers crossed that it comes out. But here we go. So, last shot on a day. Of course, the wind would come back. I need to bring my umbrella out with me, I think. Come on, go away, wind. To be fair, the camera isn't really moving much, not like I can see if it's moving at all, to be honest. There we go. Last shot taken, and I'm so excited about these shots. And I cannot wait to come back here, because this is absolutely beautiful, and I'm really glad that I came down this way. Right, I'm gonna get packed up now, so I'll see you guys in a second. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I say, I'm not here to do a tourist information video for Exmoor, but what I would say, if you guys are looking for somewhere to come with a family or just on your own as a bit of photography trip, or maybe the whole family does photography, I don't know, but maybe you're looking for somewhere to come that is out the way and a quiet, peaceful, with sort of rolling countryside, forest, beautiful rivers, really old buildings and sort of places like this where you've got coastline and stuff to come to, then I'll definitely recommend coming down here. It's like I say, I, I believe, it does get a lot of visitors, I'm not saying it doesn't, but um, I believe personally that it does get overlooked a little bit, overshadowed just a tiny bit by just Devon's coastlines 
and uh, Dartmoor and of course Cornwall which is a bit further down the coastline uh, so I do think it does get a bit overlooked and there's loads of real nice B&Bs here and uh, definitely recommend coming down here especially if you're in photo photography as well because there is so much to shoot down here definitely so anyway that aside I hope you've enjoyed this video I've really 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 enjoyed myself today I can't remember the last time I actually enjoyed my photography this much to be honest with you I've just had such an amazing day out with my 4x5 like I say just coming out with the Intrepid in its native form and just shooting with it it's so easy to shoot with I just love using it and I just I've just really really enjoyed my day like I said I've not really had a plan I've just come out to see what I could find and just driven from place to place I have had a quick look on Google just to see what it was about that's how I found the bridge shot earlier but um, yeah I've just really really enjoyed myself today and I hope you have enjoyed watching the video if you have please leave a like it helps me out massively please um, if you haven't already please uh, consider con subscribing to the channel because I really do appreciate that and please 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 leave a comment comment below because I do read them all and I do get back to people and I apologize so much for the fact that it takes me forever and I'm to reply to people I'm really really sorry about that it's just life takes over and it gets so busy but I do get back to people uh, even if it takes me a week or so um, anyway so that aside so from this beautiful location I will see you guys in the next one bye for now